Hey everybody, Roar Alexander, wellness architect and functional lifestylist from RoarAlexander.com and today I am going to introduce you to my furniture free house. So we all know that sitting is the new smoking and studies have shown us that on average people spend 13 hours a day sitting and another seven to eight hours in bed meaning on average people are 20 to 21 hours of either sitting or laying down in other words just being in static non-moving positions now when people talk about sitting and the new smoking and all they're not necessarily talking about you 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 know just about the sitting position in fact you know the studies have shown that people with standing desks if you only stand are in no better condition really there's just leads to other problems but the fact is we are stationary and in these static positions too long and static positions that are lowering our range of motion you know the average bed now is over about three feet high the average chair has you sitting at 90 degrees toilets are getting higher we are not doing enough squatting enough bending and just purely enough just non-static movement and including movements that go through our full range of motion so i'm going to show you how i have designed my house to maximize movement and maximize that non 90 degree uh sitting how i always have a you know a basic my days packed with different angles different positions uh and just very small movements this stuff is not rocket science but I've really designed my house um, to be very much about movement and not about sitting. Uh, I'll also show you my workspace where that's about sitting. I rarely, honestly, ever sit. I don't even remember really the last times I sit very often in a 90 degree chair. That's not to say I don't when I drive in my car, obviously you have to. But the fact is most of us, you know, you look at what the average person does. Sleeps for eight hours, get up, make a cup of coffee, sit down. Right? They sit down, maybe they watch some breakfast TV, you know, whatever. Then they go, they sit on the toilet, they go, they get ready, they sit in their car, they get in the office, they sit again, they sit, sit, sit. Maybe they get up to do a little bit of um, grab some lunch, maybe go get some water, things like that. Then they get back in their car or in the train or whatever they're getting into. They sit again, they get home, they sit down again. Basically, they're sitting until they go to bed. Now, if you're lucky, some people go to the gym in the middle, but on average, only 31% of people have a gym membership or go to a gym. Then, of course, having a gym membership doesn't mean you're going. Statistics have shown that a large number of people that have gym memberships go only once, if at all. So, you know, there's a big problem there. And then this is the other thing, too. A lot of people think that just because they have a gym membership, that because they go to the gym, you know, even let's say you even go, I'm just going to throw it out there. Let's go and say you every single day for an hour. You do the math, you are still only 4% more active than somebody who doesn't go to the gym at all. Now that's not to say those four hours are not important. They are, I was at the gym this morning. But there is no way that that one hour of activity at the gym and let's talk about a lot of the average gyms you know i'm here in vancouver a lot of the average gym it's still sit down to do your you know leg extension sit down to do leg curls you know lie down there's a lot of lying down and sitting down very little movement going on even in the gym so people go to the gym and a lot of them still end up spending a good majority of their time either laying down or sitting down sure they're activating some muscles but there's better ways to go about it so Today I'm going to show you a very few simple things. Now I'm not saying you have to turn your whole house into kind of a, a, a movement focused or furniture free house like I am. Um, and you're going to see what I say when I say I'm furniture free. Um, doesn't mean that I don't ever sit down. I'm sitting down right now, but we'll go over where I'm sitting. We'll talk about how I sit, how I sleep, how I eat and how I work. Hope you guys enjoy this video. So the first thing you're going to notice in my house is my standing desk over here. I have a standing desk with a bar stool. Now, I, you're sitting right now, you're going, oh, he has a chair. Well, that is true because, like I said, just doing standing all the time is not, um, is, does, it's really no better. So what I can do with my stool quite often is I'll stand on my desk to do my work, but also on my stool, I can sit down, I can sit down with one leg, I can place my foot up on the crossbar down here, I can switch my feet, I can put both feet up. So quite often I'm just kind of half sitting on it like this, kind of leaning on it. So that's one of the, that's one of the first things you'll notice. Now, one of the next things you're gonna notice when you come to my place is my Japanese style dining table. So I am really inspired by Japanese culture. Um, I love the way that they really focus on movement. So one of the first things 
things I did when I came back to Canada is I said, I really want a Japanese table. When I was living in Asia, in fact, the whole four years I was in Thailand, we almost just always sat cross-legged, just like this, just on the floor to do eating, and it really grew on me. But at the same time, I don't really like, I'm not a big fan of having the food on the ground, really. So I found my solution with this Japanese-style dining table. I have these Thai mats. You can sit on it with your knees. I do my work, and I do almost all my meals at my table right here. Now, behind here, you can see my few pieces of furniture. What I have here is a very low beanbag style chair. When I sit on it, as you're going to see, I'm actually in a very deep squat position. So this is where I do majority of my sitting. Now beside it, so I have this big Joe beanbag chair and that is kind of where I like to lie down. I like to kick back. Um, if I'm doing some work, you know, I'll kind of lay back on that. I can lay back and read a book. It just keeps me on the floor, constantly changing around my leg positions. I've noticed since I started using this stuff, since I moved back to Canada, that it's really helping to improve my mobility um, as well. It's a great way just to make sure that I'm in all these different positions. I'm never sitting in that, you know, 90 degree angle. If I am sitting, it's quite often in a deep squat on that bad boy right there. Now in the kitchen, I just have this. This is, I'm so tall, it's so difficult to show everybody things because I'm always so much taller than everything else. This is just a standing bar table. So quite often in the morning, this is where I come, I make my coffee and I stand here and I drink my coffee. I can, you know, do some stretches like this while I'm drinking my coffee. But uh, again, stool, I don't think I've ever used this stool. Actually, I'm pretty, that's pretty dusty. I've never actually used that stool before. Now, as you heard in the intro, I also talked about beds being really high. Again, I have stolen from Japanese culture, and what I did is I just took the idea of the futon, and I kind of, I westernized it a little bit. I was actually saw a picture on Pinterest that was really interesting, and what they did is they just took some of these shipping crates, you know, these typical wooden shipping crates that you can get almost anywhere that gets big deliveries. Quite often, they'll just give them to you. However, do your research, make sure you get non-toxic ones. And what they did on the Pinterest um, little picture I saw is they took these, they painted them white, which I have not done yet, but I'm getting, gonna get around to it. And they also put some lights in underneath. So for fun, I like to turn on these lights. You can see them glowing under there. When this is painted white, it'll look really nice. And then just a non-spring, just your typical IKEA foam mattress. Now, as you can see, I am in a very deep squat position, so I can sit cross-legged like this if I want. And then every morning for me to get out of bed, basically I have to get into a deep squat and stand up. Or, you know, I have to put my hands down, go down here and stand up. So you can see it's significantly different than the typical three foot, you know, one meter tall beds that people just pretty much slide out of and they're already standing up. So that is my solution to the bedroom. Now, on the floor, I have my traditional Mysore yoga mat, which I picked up when I was on my uh, trip with Ramona Berganza through India. And above it, as you can see up there, just a little bit, I have a, a plastic pyramid that I picked up at Pyramid Valley Meditation Center. Uh, not that I'm a pyramid power person really, but it's kind of a nice little reminder of just when it's time to meditate. So, you know, I can just do any kind of stretching I want in here in the morning if I want. I can do a little bit of breathing practices before I go to bed at night, stuff like that. But again, just having my little Mysore yoga mat on the ground, again, along with that, just helps to me to remind me to get in my movement and make sure I'm getting in my breathing practices. Before you ask me what it is that I keep on my Japanese style table, I have my feng shui compass I picked up in Hong Kong, along with some uh, Chinese and Thai coins. Over here, I have my Thailand chopstick set. And then over here, that is a Tibetan singing bowl, as well as some of the books I'm reading right now. One is Feng Shui Your Life, and the other is the Non Tinfoil Guide to EMFs. In case you're wondering what this stuff is over here, this is actually my newest shipment from Anthrodesk. Anthrodesk is an awesome Canadian company that does uh, everything when it comes to basically standing desks and optimizing your workspace. This is a brand new fatigue mat they just sent me uh, that I'm going to be taking actually um, to my uh, stand-up desk today, which is downtown, as well as this. This is a, if you watch my other video, you'll notice I had to put my laptop on a box in order to bring it up to my eye height. This is actually a really cool swivel arm, which I'll show you guys at the end of this video as well um, when I show you what my workspace looks like that's going to allow me to basically bring my laptop up to eye height yet keep my bluetooth keyboard at my proper elbow height 
finally we get to the washroom. Now you're probably saying, well, what can you possibly do in a washroom? Well, there's two things that you can do. One I do, one I don't actually have yet, but I'm going to tell you about it because it's been on the top of my list forever. I just haven't got around to getting it yet, but I will get it very soon. So in the shower, if you want to, now these are very easy. You know, you can actually find these quite a lot. Um, in the kind of the phar medical pharmacies. This is a shower stool, usually reserved for people that need to sit in the shower a lot. Usually you find it for older people or people that are injured. But what you can do, because again, it's only set up to about 12 inches high, is if you want, you can have one of these in your shower and you can actually get down into a deep squat and sit in the shower. So in the morning, you can do your standing shower, but you can also sit down, let the water come down on you. And if you're into the cold showers, it's a great way just to sit there and just suck it up. Now, the other thing that I don't have, and I'm not gonna show you right now because I don't have it is obviously a squatty potty actually I'll show you a picture of it right now so the squatty potty basically allows you to get into a very deep squat position which is better for the body it's better for our physiology uh, studies and lots of research have shown that the that 90 degree angle that we sit in traditionally right now is actually not very good it puts a lot of pressure on our internal bowels so having a squatty potty is going to set you up in that proper position now if you've ever been to Asia or even parts of old Europe, quite often a lot of North Americans are surprised when they go into the toilet and they're just going to see a hole in the ground. And then quite often we're stuck, like, you know, we've got hands on the walls and we're doing all this weird stuff. Well, that's because a lot of the Asian culture, especially, especially today, they just can still get down into a nice deep squat position. Quite often you'll see them just eating in a squat position. They just converse in a squat position. So getting into that really deep squat position is a great way um, to start improving your mobility and just start improving your life. So what I would suggest is getting yourself maybe a couple, you know, 12 inch wooden stools that you can place around the house and that's just gonna remind you again, just little things to remind you, oh, I should probably do my squats today. So you can go to any hardware store, any store really, I mean, even in the mall, um, just get a little 12 inch stool, place it down somewhere and just say to yourself, you know what? Every day I'm going to sit in a deep squat for three minutes. You can also just do things like wall sits. Now, of course, the last thing I always do, I head out this door and I'll go for a walk. Walking, one of the best things that you can possibly do for your health. I try to walk every single day. Even if I go to the gym, I just don't say, well, I went to the gym, so that's my activity today. I will still go for a walk every single day. It doesn't have to be very long. Honestly, just a walk around the block is more than fine enough. Now, little tip for you, if you want to burn some extra calories, you want to help keep the fat off, Try to taking a little walk either before or after your dinner, particularly after your dinner is really gonna help you digest it, or doing a little bit of a speed walk before dinner just helps with regulating blood sugar levels a little bit more. So try to get into walking at least once every single day. All right, so I lied. There's one more thing I'm gonna show you because I haven't shown it to you yet, and that is my feet. Oh, everybody loves feet, but what is this I'm wearing on my feet? Well, these are toe separators. You know, different companies sell them. In fact, I even see one right now advertising on Instagram that sells them for, I think it's about $65 for a silicone pair of these. All you do is you place them between your toes. Now, do not spend $65. These you can get at the dollar store. In fact, I think it's for, what is it? Is it manicures or pedicures? Whichever one the feet is that women do quite a bit of the time. These you can get at the dollar store, but what they do is they just allow you to, um, spread your toes out a bit, which is healthy for your feet. A lot of the times, you know, especially around here, we often have our, you know, feet inside socks, inside shoes all day. That is literally like wearing mittens. Imagine if you just wore mittens for, you know, eight to 10 hours a day, even longer on your hands every single day. Imagine what would happen to your hands. They would pretty much end up like this, maybe the thumbs free, but your hands would end up, if you did that every single day, they would end up in this really stiff position where they almost become more like, you know, like penguin, uh, penguin wings than anything else. So same idea with your feet. Your feet are meant to be very movable and dexterous. Now, if you see babies, babies are great. They can cling on everything with their feet and they can move their feet independently. When we get older, we don't do that. So having a pair of these yoga toes is a great way. I throw these on quite often and I just try to wear them for as long as I can.
everybody, so as promised, here's a quick little just sneak peek at my Anthro Desk workstation. Huge shout out, by the way, to Anthro Desk for hooking me up really large. So just show you guys what I got going on over here. So this is where I do a huge majority of my work. You can see this is quite often where I record my podcast from. I have my uh, Focusrite track station there, my microphone set up, and then of course you got your selfie camera up here. So I can face it like this and records me while I'm doing my podcast. On top of that is my Anthro Desk standing desk now what I did to upgrade it just a little tweak because I'm a big fan of whiteboards is I installed this whiteboard paper on it so I've turned about maybe about 25% of my standing desk into a whiteboard desk as well and then on top of here this is brand new I, again Anthrodesk set me I had my laptop set up in a box they've sent me this really great swivel arm that allows to bring the laptop right up to my eye height now of course, you know, standing, we've said before, is not just a total solution. So a couple more little hacks I've put in here is, this is my brand new fatigue mat, by the way. You definitely need a fatigue mat when you're at a standing desk. It's a, you cannot have, you cannot stand all day without a fatigue desk. The other thing I've done, as you can see, I have a 12 inch squat stool, as well as an Ikea table that I can use when I want to get down into a nice deep squat position. So what I'll do very often is I move basically for, through standing. Now this of course is an electronic stand. Desk, so I can just press the button it can lower to sitting if I do want to sit and then I can also do some squatting the desk of course doesn't go to squatting because that's not what normal people do but that's why I have this my little uh, 12 inch stool on here to allow me to do some squatting as well band back here if I want to do a few little exercises just to wake up the old muscles but all in all this is my anthro desk standing desk workstation let's go back to my house well, there you have it, a tour of my furniture-free, movement-inspiring house. Again, really simple things. Like I said, you don't have to necessarily go and take everything apart, but honestly, getting yourself a Japanese dining table, throwing yourself down with a beanbag, setting up a little area in your house, uh, what I call a zen zone, that just reminds you to do some movement, throwing in a 12-inch squat stool, anything like that that reminds you just to get a little bit more movement in your day. Think about lowering your bed. Now, one of the reasons I I don't actually have the Japanese style entirely on my bed is because you know when you place it on the floor uh, it kind of keeps in the moisture so by having that couple inches under there allows the air moisture to go through now in a Japanese traditional house what they normally do is they just roll up their futon every day so in other words they take apart their bed they put it back and forth every single day um, obviously I'm not gonna do that that's not the proper kind of mattress for that but you want to make sure you're not just throwing a mattress on the ground either because you're gonna get a bunch of you know moisture in there and that leads to mold and problems like that so hope you guys enjoyed the tour of my home and of course of my workspace that you also saw if you did please share this video and don't forget to visit me at www.roaralexander.com you can catch up with my blogs there and also check out while you're there my health by design eight week total health body and life transformation program i'm looking forward to helping you live stronger longer and better talk to you guys again soon